Hello. Our reading today is from the book of Psalms, um, 12 through chapter 21. But in order to be able to apply any of the Psalms, we need to first look at Psalm 1, because none of the other Psalms will be of any use to us until we've decided which side of the picture that we're on. You really can't even go into the latter Psalms or you could draw false comfort from them. You first have to decide on which road that you're traveling. You know, do I belong to the righteous um, in God's sight or to the wicked? And if I belong to the wicked, then frankly, none of the other Psalms are going to apply to me because they're not for me um, and they're not for me to use. So they can't or they shouldn't comfort me in that instance. And you might be thinking of, you know, Psalm 23, which says the Lord is my shepherd. But he's not your shepherd unless you belong um, to verses 1 to 3 in Psalm 1. Let's read it. Oh, the joys of those who do not follow the advice of the wicked or stand around with sinners or join in with mockers. But they delight in the law of the Lord meditating on it day and night. They are like trees planted along the riverbank, bearing fruit each season. Their leaves never wither, and they prosper in all they do. So the first secret of a righteous life and a blessed life is to learn how to say no. You know, that requires a strength of character to be able to say no, and sometimes it means that you're gonna have to be alone. So we need to be prepared to be different and not just swept along with the social norms of our day. And we see it's wise for us to get advice, but it's very important that you go to the right person for advice to a godly person because the world is full of advice, but most of it is bad. You know, the world might say to me, do your best and leave the rest. Or the world would say, you know, don't be so narrow minded um, or old fashioned. But someone who's going to be blessed doesn't walk according to the advice of the worldly or the godless or the wicked people. The second thing is not to stand around with sinners. And some translations say, stand in the way of sinners. Well, this is something more than just stepping out in their advice. It's hanging out with them because sooner or later, if you're hanging around with sinners, it's not long before you're infected with the same outlook that they have. Now that doesn't mean you can't minister to people, but it's spending time with them is a whole nother thing. Who you hang around is very important. We become like those we hang around. And thirdly, blessed is the man who doesn't sit in the seat of scoffers or join in with mockers. To walk in their way is one thing, to hang around with them is another, but to sit down in the seat of scoffers is a third step of involvement with a godless society. And blessed is the man, the Bible says, who doesn't do it. It means don't sit down and joke with them in their coarse jesting um, and, and even their mockery of the things of God. You know, a godly person finds pleasure in a book that the world does not enjoy reading. You know, their delight is found in the law of God. It becomes a bright ideal of how they really want to live. You know, someone godly delights in the laws of God because um, they're a guide to the, the kind of life that that person now wants to live. And how badly we all really want to fit in. You know, that's normal. We want to be liked and accepted. And there's always been a popular crowd that's set up the standards as to what most people want to be like. But what happens when that crowd is pulling you in a direction that's away from God. You know, which side is more important to you? God's side or the world, the society? Well, I grew up watching shows like I Love Lucy and Leave It to Beaver, very wholesome TV, when they wouldn't even allow husbands and wives to be seen sleeping in the same bed together. You know, you certainly would never hear the name of the Lord being taken in vain on television. But today, shows have become popular that are elevating every form of sexuality outside of traditional marriage. Most of us fail to realize just how pervasive the shaping of the minds of society has been, especially to our children, who are the most vulnerable. Parents, you know, like children, still want to fit in, but fit into what? You know, all of the cars we see with bumper stickers that are featuring the universities that their children attend, they should probably be replaced 
with something that says my son or daughter is being brainwashed or indoctrinated at such and such university. Because there really are only two sides. It's those in God and those who are not in God. And those two sides have nothing to do with one another and they don't fit together. And we all have to decide which side that we're going to join because life will get very difficult if you think that you can navigate both sides. Throughout the Psalms, David contrasts both of the sides. There are those who stand on the side of God and then there are the wicked. And frequently in the Psalms, David is seeking God as to why the godless seem to prosper. Why are they winning? Or he's asking God for help to protect him from the wicked. But I want you to notice that never does David assimilate or try to be like the godless side. David begins in Psalms 12, uh, verses 1 to 2. Help, O Lord, for the godly are fast disappearing. The faithful have vanished from the earth. Neighbors lie to each other, speaking with flattering lips and deceitful hearts. A divided heart never works. You know, one side will win. Either you'll be drawn to the world or you'll be drawn to God. And David expresses the heart of the godless in, in verses three and four. May the Lord cut off their flattering lips and silence their boastful tongues. They say, we will lie to our heart's content. Our lips are our own. Who can stop us? And you can hear these same kind of things being said today by godless voices that are elevated in our society. He goes on to describe the godless in verse eight. Even though the wicked strut about and evil is praised throughout the land. But contrasted with this godless majority, we read in verses five to seven, the Lord replies, I have seen violence done to the helpless and I have heard the groans of the poor. Now I will rise up to rescue them as they have longed for me to do. The Lord's promises are pure, like silver refined in a furnace, purified seven times over. Therefore, Lord, we know you will protect the oppressed, preserving them forever from this lying generation. When David wrote the Psalms, he didn't have as clear of a picture that we have today of what happens when we die. You know, we have it now because of the teachings of Jesus and the rest of the writers of the New Testament. We know that God's going to make all things new. He's going to make it all right in eternity. Even if right now they seem to be out of control here on earth. And even when it seems like the godless have the upper hand. But it's time now for us that we choose a side. The godless majority or the remnant. There has always been a remnant. Which is a people who choose to follow God regardless of what everyone else is doing. You know, one will make you popular on this earth, but the other, not so much. But we have to decide if we are citizens of this earth or are we a citizen of heaven? That's what the Bible says. We're not really allowed dual citizenship. People here often prefer to try to ride in the middle, but there is no middle. James says, don't you realize that friendship with the world makes you an enemy of God? I say it again. If you want to be a friend of the world, you make yourself an enemy of God. Sides are required. This is why Joshua said, choose this day in whom you will serve. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. The one in the middle is a double-minded man. His ways are confusing because the sides diverge rather than converge. We read in James 1 verses 5 to 8, if you need wisdom, ask our generous God and he will give it to you. He will not rebuke you for asking, but when you ask him, be sure that your faith is in God alone. Do not waver, for a person with divided loyalty is as unsettled as a wave of the sea that is blown and tossed by the wind. Such people should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Their loyalty is divided between God and the world, and they are unstable in everything they do. I pray that you have been able to receive this wisdom from the Word of God today and that you're blessed in reading it and able to apply it to your heart as you meditate on it throughout your day. And God bless you. Shalom.